right. Uh, we are exactly seven o'clock, seven o'clock. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking your time, taking your resources, and choosing to spend the next 40 minutes with us. Like I always say, my name is Mutawun Tapelo, and I'm known as the Big Trimmer. Um, it's such a privilege and a looking forward session because our guest today is one of uh, the gentlemen that I really respect in the space, a gentleman who doesn't need any introduction to any platform, especially when we speak about empowerment, when we speak about human development, when we speak about being able to shift how a person thinks uh, in terms of using the way they think as a source of influencing their decisions. So today we have Ndate Belindaba. Uh, it has been my, 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 my wish to listen to him, if not only uh, snooping behind his back and listening to some of his uh, work via YouTube. So today, I'm privileged that I'm going to listen to him live and to listen to him as to what he has prepared for us because just the subject, the title itself, is just interesting. If you could be engineered to lose, you can be engineered to win. Thank you very much, sir for coming and blessing us. And I know that you're gonna water our seeds of possibility. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you to the first ever online entrepreneurial survival that is brought, uh, presented by Mind Think Institute. Uh, thank you very much, Tapelo. And it's such a great pleasure to be here and honor as well. And uh, thank you very much. And I really appreciate the invite. And I, I, I do believe that we all going to benefit from this. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much. And it's such a pr uh, great pleasure and honor to be here. And to Thank all the, the listeners as well. All right. Uh, how, how, we going to do, how are we going to work? We're going to give you your time, say, to water us. The, 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 the garden is very huge. You can, we have all the time. So you can... Uh, drive us until the time that you feel that we are okay, and then we'll start giving questions. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is we are allowed to ask questions at the end of presentation. And those who have uh, wants to, um, they have suggestions or recommendation. You can just put them on the chat box. Look, I'm very grateful for the idea because people are contributing with their ideas as to how we can better the platform and how we can reach out. And to each and every one of you, I just want to say thank you. This is our day five, but already we are, we are a family. Already we look forward to everyday dose. Ndadwaka, let me not waste any time. Give your people what you have prepared for them. No, thank you. Thank you very much once again. Uh, maybe let me just start off by telling a little bit of a story here. You know, there was a there was a crew that was traveling, you know, it was actually in a, in, a, in, a, in a chopper, in a helicopter, and it was traveling over the Colombian jungle. And while they were above this uh, Colombian jungle, this chopper had a technical problem. And then they had to crash land, and they crash landed in this uh, uh, jungle. Uh, it was just a few kilometers before they had arrived or reached their destination. And as a result of this, the, the, the crew inside, I mean, it was a combination of uh, engineers, your accountants, your financial guys, and, and all the clever people, you know, the, 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 quality, the quality engineers were there as well. And they decided that because no one was, was injured, they jumped outside of this chopper and they took out the machetes that they had because they had a lot of machetes because they were going to do something wherever, I mean, wherever they were going. And they went outside and they started cutting down the trees because they were trying to find out their way so that they can get to their destination. And they started chopping down these trees and they did this with so much precision because we can, can understand that when you talk about engineers, I mean, you're talking about these people they are clever people. I mean, like in terms of the angles and, and, and the sharpness of these machetes, they were, they, were, they were to the point. And then they started chopping these trees and they were doing this. 
And uh, one of the guys actually left them. He went to climb an, a tree and he climbed up. And when he got to the top, he started saying, guys, guys, and the guys were not listening to him. They said, no, we're busy here. We're busy chopping down these trees because we need to get to our destination. And after a while they said, what, what are you on about? Tell us, what do you want to say? And he said, guys, I've got two, I've got good news and bad news for you. Where would you like me to start? But anyway, let me start with the, 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 the good news. The good news is you guys are working hard and you are very efficient in what you are doing. I can see these trees are getting down. So you are doing very well. I mean, the angles, the trees you are using, I mean, like you're cutting these trees. But the bad news is you are going in the wrong direction. Our destination is not where you are going. Actually, it's on the other side. And what did that mean? You can be so efficient in what you do, but if you are doing the wrong thing or you are going in the wrong direction, your work means nothing. I think this is something because most people are busy being busy. You know, busyness does not mean productivity. You are just busy. I mean, just killing time, getting what is actually, uh, what you think needs to be done or to be, to be completed for the day. So the most important thing, especially as entrepreneurs, you need to understand why are you doing what you are doing? Is it the correct thing or you are just sweating stuff that is not supposed to be even entertained? That's the first thing that you need to look at. So the critical question as well that you need to ask yourself as an entrepreneur, for an example, is number one, what problem are you solving? Because in the world, you need to choose the problem that you are solving. I think there's this kind, of, a, this kind of, of, of notion or this thinking that as an entrepreneur, you do everything. There's actually no such. If you really want to be so good at what you do, you need to identify the problem that you're asking. I get to deal with a lot of entrepreneurs as a life coach as well and a, and a business person. And I ask the first question as to what problem are you solving? I mean, people cannot answer that question. I mean, to say, I'm solving this problem. I mean, if you are solving all the problems under the sun, then it means you do not specialize in anything. And right now, you may be chasing all the masks and all the sanitizers, but what problem are you really solving? Because if you, are not really identif if you have not identified the kind of problem that you are supposed to solve, then you're, not gonna be, you, you're just going to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And in this entrepreneurship space, it's actually the jungle is the survival of the fittest. And the fittest is the one who is most skillful. So what is it that you are skillful at? Something that sets you apart because there is something that you need to be answering. And number two, what standard do you want to solve that problem that you are solving at? Do you just want to be a leader or do you want to be a leader in what you are solving or you want to be a follower or you just wanna be lost in a crowd, you know, just to be one of the many. What is it that you want to be in terms of solving the problem? Because that will actually determine how you show up every day. Because there's a difference between showing up, you know, wanting to win and avoiding losing. You know, when you want to win, you give it your all, you, you, you prepare yourself, you get some people that will help you. You read all the books you need to read and you get some training. But if you just avoid losing, it means you just show up just to do what's enough. And if you really want to win, you cannot show up as someone who just wants to, I mean, who, who wants to avoid losing, but you need to show up as someone who really wants to win. It means you need to take responsibility. It means you need to be able to say, this is my stuff and I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to achieve this. So that's, that, that's number two. And then the third question is, what sets you apart in what you do? If you are selling whatever you're selling, what is it that sells you apart that makes the client or the potential client to say, this is the person that I want? Are you just doing it just to get them out of the way so that you can get paid? Or are you doing the best service that you are supposed, or you giving the best service that you're supposed to give? That's the very important thing now as, as an entrepreneur, because people think that being an entrepreneur is easy. Being an entrepreneur is not easy. It means you need to work harder, actually harder than almost everybody else. 
You don't just have to sit there and wait for the next problem because problems are always there, but you need to choose what problem that you want to solve. And now this leads me to something, and, and, and I'm sure you understand, there's a point that you need to understand. Even if you go to the Bible for an example, number one, if you go to Luke 12 verse 34, it says, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I know people take this very lightly, but now let's unpack it. What does that mean? When you say wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also, it simply means that a man was not born to make a living, but to live his making. Because living his making will make him his living. So let me say that again. It's, it means that a man was not born just to survive, just to make a living. And, and, and work for the bills and stuff like that. But a man was born to live his making. It means to, to express his gifts because through your gifts, you'll make a living out of that. Actually, you don't just make a living, you make a fortune. Hence, it talks about treasures. So it's very important to understand, number one, that we're born for a purpose. We're born to express our gifts. Now, what is your gift? How much time are you spending every day to search for that gift that you were actually born with? And further, Confucius said, know thyself. That's a quote by Confucius, one of you know, the philosophers. Know thyself. So when, you, when he says know thyself, it means know yourself. Because when you know yourself, you're going to avoid wrong relationships in your life. You're going to choose the, the right career in your life. It means whatever you do, you will do something that you're meant to do. You're not going to be chasing shadows and mixing with the wrong people because you know what you're all about. You know what your gift is. So wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. And as Confucius said, know thyself. And then coming to another one by Pablo Picasso, one of the greatest painters, he said, the meaning of love is to find your gift. That's the first part. The meaning of life is to find your gift. And then the purpose of life is to express that gift that you've found. So the first part is to find your gift. And then the second part is to express your gift. So this really tells us that we need to spend time searching for our gifts. And you find most people saying, but I don't know what my purpose is. Your purpose is to express your gift. To find your gift is to find the thing that gives your life a meaning. Is to find the thing that turns you on. That thing that when you do it, you just lose sense of time and sense of everything. There is that, but because you are busy chasing money and chasing everything else, you don't connect with yourself. You don't know who you are. You don't know what is it that excites you. You don't know what is it that makes you feel like do it again and again and again. I mean, for an example, I mean, I, I trained as an engineer and I studied a number of things and I kept on doing these things and earning money and good money at that. But I felt that there was something not right with me. I was not connected. I felt that there was something that I was supposed to do, something more than what I was doing. And later on, I connected with myself. I then later realized that I started being an engineer. I did mathematics, I did statistics, I did all these different things. And I had climbed the corporate ladder. I, mean, corporate ladder. I, was, I was a senior manager at the time. And then I had to come back and discover who I was. I had to connect with my gifts. And then today, I'm an author for books. I mean, I speak on different platforms and I'm traveling the world doing what I do. I do a lot of life coaching and business consulting. And these are the things that I'd never thought were possible for me. And now what does that mean? If you find who you are, you will enjoy what you're doing. Even if it's difficult, but because you are passionate about it, you'll always make time for it. And you'll always do the best in what you do. So that's something that's very important about finding yourself. So most people are just doing things that they hate just for the sake of money. And, and until, if you look at people who are the best at what they do, 
These are the people who are connected with themselves. I mean, you look at the likes of Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, they love what they're doing. You look at the likes of Patrice and Zipper as well. I mean, they love what they're doing. Elon Musk, they love what they're doing. They're not just doing it for money. And then money comes because you found yourself. You are doing you. And then money comes as a result of that. And then I love another one. There's another one by Mark Sullivan. Mark Sullivan said, to find a career to which you are adapted to by nature and to work hard at it is as close and as near to a formula for success and happiness as the world provides. Let me say it again. To find a career to which you are adapted to by nature and to work hard at it is as near to a formula for success and happiness as the world provides. It means the world provides happiness and success, but to someone who is doing something that he is naturally adapted to, something that nature has given to him. So what is it that nature has given to you? For me, it's speaking. For me, it's the ability to, to, to connect with people and to teach in terms of how people can connect with themselves. That's what I was actually born to do. And to write is even something that was given to me because I don't have to struggle to write. I mean, ideas just come. Hence, I've written these books and I'm continuing to write. I'm enjoying this. But unlike being an engineer, that I was, you know, sitting there and doing these things. And then, it's not something that was me, but because I was qualified, I'd gone to university, I'd studied for this thing. And then I felt like, oh, this is something that I was meant to do. No, there's a difference between something that you are qualified for, that you have a, you know, a certificate for or a degree for, and something that is you. I mean, you look at some of the teachers. There are teachers who are highly qualified, but they cannot teach. There are doctors who've got all the qualifications, but they, they, they are not real doctors. I mean, that's, 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 that's just a simple example that is there. So you need to find yourself. Don't be defined by a qualification. Because when you chose to, I mean, like to pursue that field, you didn't know better. You were choosing based on how much money that, uh, you know, that, 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 that position or that job or that career pays. And once you're there, then you start to realize that you are not in the right place. So you have to continually seek for yourself because that's something that's very important. Because once you connect it with yourself, you're going to be full of passion and you're going to enjoy what you're doing and you're going to add more value. And just the last one on that one. Uh, one of the guys, again, Confucius said, a man who chases many rabbits catches none. So if you are chasing too many things, you catch nothing. You end up just being a jack of all trades once again and a master of none. So it means you need to choose one rabbit and stick to it until the end. Like for me, what I'm doing right now, it's, a, it's, a, it's all about speaking, it's all about writing, it's all about making a difference in terms of how people they can, how can people discover themselves. That's what I do. I'm not into masks, I'm not, I'm not into sanitizers, I'm not into generators, I'm not into, you know, I'm not into anything that moves but I've identified what I'm doing. And this is something that, that sets me apart. Hence, I'm saying, if I, was, if I was still a person that I was qualified to be, I wouldn't be traveling the world that I'm doing right now because of that. So I'm saying, find you because you are unique and you are special and you are different. Don't be intimidated by people who are already doing what your heart would love to do because you're gonna bring in a different flavor. It's like sp spices or it's like ice cream. If you don't like vanilla ice cream, it doesn't mean you don't like ice cream. Maybe you like chocolate ice cream. Maybe you like, you know, a, a different flavor. So we all show up, as, I mean, in different flavors. So stick to what you are. Don't try to compare with someone else. Compare yourself with someone else, but compare with yourself, the person that you were yesterday. That's something that's very important. And now, moving on to the second part. You know, there was a man, 
Somewhere here in Africa, there's a story that is actually told by Russell Conway, a man who was here in Africa, who was very happy, very contented. And while he was sitting at home, you know, he was with family because they were happy. He was visited by another man. And this man started telling him about the diamonds and the value of diamonds and how much he will do if he were to have diamonds. He would be such a happy man. And he told him that, you know, the day he had diamonds, he will never have, I mean, he will never experience any problem. And this man said, wow, I never, I never knew anything about diamonds. So when the, the guy who had visited him left, he started not feeling good about himself. He couldn't sleep at night, just thinking about these diamonds. And one day he decided that he was going to leave his home. Actually, he sold his home and he deserted his family. And he traveled to Europe in search of diamonds. And he searched for these diamonds until the end of his life because he gave up because he couldn't find these diamonds. And then he died a very poor man. He threw himself in the sea. Now, this man was very happy. He, was, he had everything going for him. But this other person came and said to him, if you were to find diamonds, you'd be so happy. And the diamonds that he was searching for, actually, in Europe, were just in his, behind his, 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 in his I mean, like behind his, his yard, in his backyard, because there was a stream over there that was rich with diamonds. And the person who bought that farm from him actually benefited from that. Now, what does that mean? In life, we go out in search of things that are said to be beautiful, whereas those things are in us. We have to find these things in us. So for me, I went out there searching for a good life. Hence, I studied, I was doing, I mean, engineering work, and I grew up and being a senior manager and doing these things. And later on, I realized that whatever I was searching for, that happiness was in me, was not out there in the world, but it was in me. And how did I find it? I found it in my name. You know, my name is Veli. And I realized that, hi, man, everything is here. So V in my name is actually, when you look at Veli, Veli is a success formula. And if you were to use this formula, I can guarantee you right now that you will be a success in whatever you do. So this, this success formula is VELI, which is V-E-L-I. So the V stands for vision. We've heard of the saying that without a vision, people perish. And the vision is something that guides us. The vision is the picture of the dream or of the goal that we have. And when you keep this vision in our heads, it means you have this this picture of what you want, it energizes us every day. It excites us every day. And we cannot be spoken out of it. Like this man who was spoken out, you know, to go and look for diamonds elsewhere, whereas the diamonds were actually in his backyard. So this stands for this vision. So vision is something that's very important. You need to see in your mind what it is that you want to achieve. Because if you can't see it, you cannot have it. What is it that you want? Stop chasing too many things. Have this vision of something that you want and then stick to it. And a vision is something that actually gives your life a meaning because if you do not have a picture of what you want, then it means you're a, I mean, a lost person. Have this vision and your life will be in a different place. And this is something that drives me every day. I'm just holding these pictures of what I want and every day I'm attracted to it. So I'm attracted to this thing that I want and it gives me energy. So that's number one, the V. And then, and also, you know, people do not fail. You know, there's this thing that it's not about aiming too high and miss. It's about most people fail because, let me say this again, people do not fail in life because they aim too high and miss. They fail because they aim too low and they hit. So they aim too low and they, they set lousy goals and they think, oh, I've done so well, but the goal was lousy. 
So it didn't challenge you. So it means you did not achieve anything. And then there are many people, therefore, who are stuck in that position. They are scared of setting high goals that are going to stretch them. So you need to stretch your vision. You need to have that goal that's going to challenge you. So you need to have that vision that will keep you going. And then number two, once you have set that goal and achieved it, the second one is the E. E stands for expand. You know, when you're expanding your goals, it means expand yourself, challenge yourself. The things that you've enjoyed, you've achieved yesterday. Today, you need to challenge yourself and say, I need to be able to do more. Don't try to do too many things at once or a lot. Don't bite a big chunk. Bite one chunk and small chunk at a time and build from that. And then over time, you'll have achieved a lot. So that's something that's very important. So it means don't get stuck. I'm sure you've heard of people who are always talking about what they achieved yesterday. You know, I'm the first guy to do this. No, you know me, you know, I used to do this, you know, five years ago I did this. But we're not talking about that now. You know, we're not talking about that now. We're talking about the now and the future. So you need to expand yourself. You need to grow. You need to get out of yesterday. Learn from what, what you achieved yesterday, but you've got so much going for you. So that's something that's very important that you need to do. So expand your goals and expand your dreams so that you'll be challenged because it is through challenging times that we grow as human beings. And then coming to the third one, the L. So L stands for leverage your relationships. Leverage. It means maximize your relationships. You've heard of the saying that if you surround yourself with four broke people, you're going to be the fifth one. You've heard of the saying, you know, that, you know, uh, you are an average of people that you, are, you, you surround yourself with. So be very careful of who you surround yourself with. So when you maximize or you leverage your relationships, it simply means that you get people who will challenge you. You don't want to surround yourself with people who are always agreeing with you because it means they cannot challenge you. It means like there's a man who said, uh, he said something that's very important. He said, if you are the smartest one in your group, it's time to find a new group. So, but most people, I mean, you, you want to be always the smartest one in your group and people agree with you and, that, and know that if people are always agreeing with you, you are in a wrong group. It's time to get a new group that will challenge you where you would feel like there's a gap between you and them in terms of you even being the weakest link. Because it means being the weakest link, it's good because it gives you the opportunity to grow. But once you are the strongest link in your chain, you don't have any growth that you need to go through. It means you feel like you've arrived. And that is a problem. So surround yourself with people who are good at what they do, at people who are able to challenge you and question you on what you do. Not people who are going to just look at you and say, yeah, no, you're the man. Always you're the man. But you need people that will look up and somehow feel ashamed and say, oh, I still have a lot of work to do here. That's the kind of relationship that you need to involve yourself in. So that's something that's very, very important. And you've heard of something. So that also talks about teamwork. When you leverage on your relationships, it means there's this team that you have around you. It means you are benefiting from this team. And this team is benefiting from you. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've actually seen this, these birds. Uh, these birds uh, that, are, that are always flying you know, south every winter. And these birds, and call the, I mean, they are actually called the geese. These birds that fly south in, I mean, in winter, they fly in a V formation. And when they are flying in this V formation, and the one that is leading, once it's tired, it comes to the back and then the other one takes over. And in that formation, they fly further than they, they could actually fly or they can fly on themselves. So it means if you've got one goose, a goose can fly 65 to 75% further in a formation than it can fly, I mean, on its own. So it simply means that if you have a, a strong group around you, you can achieve much, much more than you can achieve when you do it, I mean, by yourself. So when you're leveraging on, on, on these relationships, it means you are benefiting a lot 
And also you are making a difference in other people's lives. So that's leveraging on relationships. And also there's something that you need to understand. When you have these relationships, you need to have a coach and you need to have a mentor someone who's going to challenge you because you cannot do it by yourself. I mean, if you looked at the, like, if you look at the likes of um, uh, 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 Michael Jordan, he had Phil Jackson as his coach. I mean, you look at the likes of uh, Tiger Woods, he had L. Woods, his father, as a coach. I mean, if you look at the likes of Nelson Mandela, by, by, I mean, on his side, or by his side, he had the likes of uh, uh, Oliver Tambo and Walter Sisulu. And if you look at these different people, people who have actually done great things, you look at Muhammad Ali, he had Angela Dundee in his corner. So that's something that is very, very important that you need to understand. You need to have a coach, someone who's gonna stretch your thinking, someone who's going to challenge you, someone who's gonna ask you difficult questions. But we are very scared, most, most of us to, to identify coaches because you don't want to be exposed. You always want to feel like you are good. But if you really want to, 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 to achieve and have a winner's mindset, you need to have a coach. You need to have someone who's going to make you uncomfortable most of the time and keep on stretching and, and helping you raise the bar in your life. And there are many people who don't have coaches. And yes, reading books is okay, but a book is not the same as a person who is next to you who will challenge you and ask you these questions every day. So that's very important. Reading books is good. I mean, I read books and that, and, but most people are just relying on books. But until you have a coach, especially if you want to be an entrepreneur, get yourself a successful entrepreneur and get to see what is it that they do. Learn from them. Don't just focus on the results, but focus on the behind the scenes. What is it that is done behind the scenes? You know, the hard work that is done, the planning that is done, the goal setting that is involved in that. I mean, the focus, what is it that they do every day? That's something that's very important because we are not what we say, what we think, or we are not what we wish we want to be, but we are what we do repeatedly. We are our habits. There are many people who are talking about what they want to achieve, but they never get to achieve these things. And everyone is talking. And everyone these days, I mean, or every second person is a motivational speaker, but are you a motivation when people look at you? Because that's a question, you know, and, and, and the choice is, are you a messenger or are you the message that you bring? Because whenever you show up, it's either you are a messenger, you are saying so and so said, so and so said, but people do not see that in you. So you need to try whenever you speak to be a message that you bring. So a message is someone who is what he talks about or what he speaks about. And hence, when you're saying there are many motivational speakers, it's because talk is cheap. I mean, everyone can motivate, you can grab a quote from there, you can grab this and share with people, then you're a motivational speaker. I mean, to show up and say, just believe in yourself and just, just trust in God, you can do it. God wants you to work. God wants you to plan. He can give you the strength, but he wants you to do the work. I mean, you can say all the right things, but if you're not doing the right thing, you'll never succeed. You'll never do it. You will never be a successful entrepreneur that you want to be. You will never be a master because mastery is not about talking, but mastery is about actions and actions that are repeated and that are sound. So now that is about mentors and, 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 and coaches. And then the last letter there is, I mean, is I. I stands for innovation. You know, you need to keep on coming up with new ideas. Innovation answers questions like, how can I do this thing differently? How can I do it faster? How can I do it cheaper? Do you understand? How can I do it differently? How can I do it faster? How can I do it cheaper? You know, when you ask every time when you do something and you ask yourself these questions, yes, I've been doing this thing and I'm doing this thing every day, but how can I do it faster? How can I do it cheaper? How can I do it quicker? Because the, your competitors are asking themselves those questions. 
and, 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 and someone who can do what you are doing faster and cheaper and quicker and better, it means that person is going to beat your hands down. You're not going to get the business because you keep on repackaging the old goods and you're doing the same old things the same way. You are not different in what you do. So that's something that's very important. And I thought on that one. So it's very important that you need to have a vision. You need to know where you're going. You need to have a plan. How are you going to get there? And what assistance do you need to get there? And who is the person that you can drop in that will help you to get where you want to go? And then you need to keep on challenging yourself. You need to grow. You need to get out of your comfort zone. Because outside of your comfort zone is something that we call the stretch zone. And beyond the stretch zone, it's something that is called the panic zone. You don't want to jump from your comfort zone to your panic zone. You know, panic zone is where, you know, you feel like you're beating off more than you can chew. But when you, go, when you move from comfort zone to stretch zone, it means you are taking one step at a time, taking it one step at a time until you get there. Don't just want to try to take, don't want to just want to take three steps. Don't just take three steps, but take one step at a time and build from that. That's something that's very important that you need to do and that you need to understand. So also you need to leverage on your relationship. So check people around you because those people will influence you. What are you discussing when you are spending time with those people that you must spend time with? What are the discussions about? Are you discussing people or are you discussing solutions? Because there are people who always discuss solutions, I mean like people and discussing the past and discussing problems, but there are no solutions that are discussed. Discussing problems does not help you, but it's discussing solutions to the problems that are existing that will help you. So don't try to solve all the problems under the sun. Identify and pick the problem that you want to solve. And then when you do that, that will set you apart. Because people are trying to solve everything just to get money today and tomorrow, but they're not looking at the future. So you want to build the future. You don't want just to focus on the here and now, but you want to build something for the future where you're saying in five years, I want to be known in this area. In five years, in 10 years, I want to be a master in this area. But most people don't tell you that. They say, no, I want, you know, I want to make money now. Which business makes more money now? That's a wrong question. You know, if you are just focusing on those things of what business makes money now, even if you look at that, I know that you have to pay the bills, but you need to have, a, you know, your eye as well, another eye in building the future, not just focusing on the here and now and moving with the moving things. You know, you, you don't want to be like that. And then number, the last one, the last letter, which is I, you need to make sure that you keep on innovating, coming up with new ideas. Because if you do not do that, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be left behind because it means you are still using the same old methods of doing things. That's why Albert Einstein said that the thinking that brought me here created problems for me at which cannot be solved. And those problems cannot be solved at the same level of thinking that created them. So it means what brought me where I am today will not bring me, will not take me where I want to be tomorrow. You have to change your thinking, innovate. That's why people are always trying to do the old things the same way over and over again. Times have changed. Now you need to think differently. So that's something that's very important that you need to understand. So vision, expand your goals, leverage your relationships and innovate. That's something that's very important. And coming back to the issue of know thyself. You know the song by The Temptations? The song says, I've been to Georgia, I've been to California, and I've been to the most exotic places in the world, but I've never been to me. What does that mean? I've tried all these different things, I've done this, but I've never discovered who I am because I don't know who I am. I've never done me. So it's very important that you need to know yourself. And as a life coach, I help a lot of people in terms of this and even organizations that I work with. And there are three things that you need to look at in order to know yourself. I'll just share this one, uh, or these three things. 
Number one, what you need to do, you need to be able to say, now as a person, you need to study yourself. What is it that turns me on? What is it that when I do it, I feel so good about myself? What is that thing? That when I do it, I forget that I'm hungry. I forget what time it is because I'm just so connected, you know, to this thing. And you cannot do that when you are too busy doing things. So whenever you do something, do that with the mind that is searching and that is checking. You need to check on yourself in whatever you are doing. Check yourself how you connect to what you are doing. So don't just do things for the mere sake of doing them. Do something, but at the same time, check on yourself. Are you connecting with this thing? Hence, I'm using an example with me or with myself. When you are, when I'm writing, I get lost. And that's how I discovered that actually writing is for me. When I speak, I just lose sense of, of things. I lose sense of time. That's how I discovered that I, this is, the, this is the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. You know, when I'm with people, communicating with people, I just feel so good. And that's how I discovered that, hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So you see, you don't have to be mindless about it. You've got to be conscious, be aware that I'm searching for myself. But remember again, I mean, if we choose the scripture this way, I mean, Matthew 7, verse 7, it says, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find, and knock and it shall be opened unto you. It means the findings are always reserved for the seekers. You've got to seek in order to find. You can't just sit on a couch and expect to find. No, the findings are out there in the field. You need to go out there and seek for what you want. So that's something that we need to keep in mind. So number one, like I said, in finding yourself, you need to observe yourself. Look at yourself when you do things. And that's, that's, that's the first thing that you do. Then number two, what you want to do if you want to really find out what you're good at. Right now, you can write five SMSs or you can write an SMS and send it to five different people that know, the, the people that know you the longest. And you say, for an example, Tapelo, I'm actually in this, I'm embarking on this journey of self-development. And I just want to know what I'm good at. Would you give me about three or four things that you think I'm actually good at? I mean, for all the years that you've known me. And send one to Tapelo, send one to James, send one to, uh, to, 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 to Matt's help, or send one to this and send one to that. And they don't know each other, they're just reading this. And it will give you maybe about two or three things, or four things. And then you are compiling your second list. Because the first one is the one that you are looking at yourself and, and observing yourself whenever you do things. And the second one is that one now that will come from these people and that know you the longest. And ask them as well that don't try to make me feel good when you give me this feedback. I want you to be honest with me and just give me these things that you think that I'm actually good at. You know, it can be three or up to five. So this is the mission that you're on now, just to make sure that you, you understand yourself. And then number three, the third list that you, that you compile is the list now where you are saying, I want to, you must remember the things that you are mostly complimented on. Now, and even when you're in high school or primary school, things that people will say, Tapelo, you're so good at this. Tapelo, you're a natural here, but Tapelo, you know, and, and whenever they played as well, they wanted to be on their side because they wanted you to do that. You know, what is it that people always said you are so good at? You know, things that they complimented you, uh, complimented you on. Because those are the clues. Those are the things that will actually give you ideas in terms of what is it that you, you're good at. So now these three lists, over time, they will bring you closer to yourself. So you are aware of what you love. And then you, 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 you've gotten these feedbacks from, um, feedback from these people. I'm like your people that know you the longest. And then number three, you keep on recalling and reflecting on what people used to say to you when you were growing up, you know, uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, as far as, as, as far as you can remember. 
And even now, when you talk to people, what do they say? What do they compliment you on? Typically, you're good with people. Typically, you're good at this. You know, when you communicate, wow, I love this. You write that down in that list. So it means now these three things will actually help you now to start developing something and say, okay, what are the common things here in these three lists of mine? Because those common things, now you start to notice and say, yes, no, actually this is me. I love this. I love myself. I love this. I love that. And now you will actually get closer to what you are supposed to do because you are searching here. So that's basically what helped me to be the person that I am and to be doing what I'm doing now. I observe, so that's how I'm helping people with this list because they will actually help you to bring yourself closer to yourself because if you don't know who you are, then it means you have a problem. You have a serious problem. And maybe just the, the last part that I can add, you know, especially as an, I mean, if you want to be an entrepreneur or you are an entrepreneur, Entrepreneurship is, 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 a hard, is a hard thing to do. It's, it's, it's hard work. You know, it's not something that is as easy as people think you know, it is. And there are a few skills that I normally share with audiences and people who want to be entrepreneurs, if, if you really want to do well. Number one, things that you need to do, you first need to know who you are. You need to know yourself. Because if you know yourself, you will choose the right kind of problem that you want to solve. Knowing yourself helps you to choose the right kind of problem that you, that, 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 you want, that, you, that, you, that you want to solve. Because there's nothing as, as bad and disappointing as choosing the wrong problem. For an example, I mean, you've seen people who are, I mean, like if you look at the idols, there are many people who go there who, with the hope of singing. But whenever they sing, you start to realize that Singing is not in them. They just love singing, but singing doesn't love them. <laughs> so it's a wrong thing. It's like you're chasing this girl that doesn't love you back, but you are just so in love and you tell everybody about this girl. And people look at you and say, but come on, boy, don't you see that this girl is not into you? Don't you see that music is not into you? You spend most of your time in the studio, but you are busy wasting your voice and your energy. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. So you don't want to be in a situation where you are choosing or you've chosen the wrong problem. And in that problem, it means you are not bringing the best solution to the problem because it's not you. So you need to know who you are. You need to understand exactly what's going on with you. So that's number one. Number two, you need to develop your communication skills as an entrepreneur because you are selling. Because when you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. So when you open your mouth, people will know who you are. When you open your mouth, because speaking is something that is very, very important because whenever you sell and people will listen to you and they can decide whether they can buy or not based on how well you can communicate the ideas, how well you can communicate you know, this, this product and, and the benefits of this product that you are actually selling. So that's something that's very important that you need to understand. And then the third one is your goal setting skills. How good are you in terms of goal setting? Or are you just jumping around and you buy or you do whatever, you know, that presents itself in front of you. You cannot afford to do that. So you need to choose once again, the problem that you are solving. As an entrepreneur, you need to know what problem are you solving? So it means your mindset must be in the right place. Because without your mindset being in the right place, you will do all the wrong things. Or you may do the right things, but you do not do them well because your mindset is not right. And then you, can, you may look at something like maybe one of the skills, the fourth skill uh, that you may want to work on is problem solving skill. The problem solving skill is something that's very, very important. So we need to be able to solve problems as they come. You need to have a method or a methodology that you use in solving problems. So that's something that's very important. And then also you need to have intense focus. You know that you're coming towards the end and you're looking at that intense focus. You need to focus on what you have chosen. Don't be all over the place. Just choose this one thing and then be all over the place. Because unfortunately, we, we grew up, we're, we're engineered wrongly for so many years, 
And for me, it's to be able to re-engineer your mind to win. And how are we, how, how, how were we engineered wrongly? For an example, we're told that, for an example, that good things come to those who wait. And some people just took that literally, and they are waiting. And unfortunately, whatever you're waiting for is also waiting for you. You've got to move. You can't wait. You've got to move towards that which you really desire to have. And we have been told that half a loaf is better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's better than, you know, a slice of bread. And some people, if they, if they have a slice of bread, they feel good about themselves. They say, oh, at least I've got a slice of bread. What about the loaf? Go for the loaf of bread that is fresh. And then be the one who leaves leftovers. Don't settle on the leftovers, but be the one who, leave, who leaves these leftovers for others. And I think for me, that's something that's very important to understand. So, yes, know thyself. And what's important as well, choose the career that is right for you. Choose the problem that is suited to you. And go out there and develop these skills to solve this problem and solve them well. And people must be willing to pay you more for your ability to solve these problems. And I think for me, this is something that's very important that I just wanted to show, I mean, to share, I mean, with the, with the audience. And, and this is something that is very key. And lastly, maybe as I close, you know, at the University of uh, Kentucky, there's a guy by the name of John Calipari, who was the, the basketball uh, uh, team coach. So he was the coach of this uh, basketball team. And every time at the end of the session, of the training session, he will switch on the lights in the gym and in the, in the, in the basketball uh, uh, court. And one day, one of the players asked him, he said, coach, why every day and every evening, once we are finished with our training, you switch on the lights and then you leave? And uh, this coach said, you see, somewhere out there in the world, there is a kid that is busy training that stays behind when everybody else goes. Ooh. And he stays behind, he pushes those weights more than others, and he bounces that ball more than other kids. Ooh. And one day, you're gonna compete against this child or against this player, and guess what? you're going to lose. Oh. I'm saying to you as an entrepreneur, when you are sleeping, when you are busy watching TV, when you are busy walking around, your competitor is busy sharpening his skills, is busy mm -hmm. developing himself, is working on his communication skills, is working on how he can solve this problem better, quicker, and faster. And one day you're going to meet in that boardroom where you are competing for the same deal and you're not going to get it so it comes back to you you need to work on yourself continuously yes wow. we need wow. to keep going on this wow wow the dragon <laughs> i'm out of these weights i'm out of weights you say find what is you because the best people are connected to themselves. Yes, absolutely. I feel like the, the, the earth has afforded us such a time, you know? And I think my question would be, after lockdown, I spent the first uh, two weeks uh, reprogramming how I speak to myself for the next level. How yes. crucial is it to program one uh, the way they speak to themselves? Because we are available for everyone, but we are very absent to ourselves. Uh, that, that's very, very important because how you talk to yourself is, actually shows how much belief you have in yourself. How you talk to yourself is something that we, 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 we I mean, that actually comes to the self-talk. How you talk to yourself determines how you show up every day, how you approach, because you can never achieve anything that you do not believe in. So when you talk to yourself, it shows how much belief you have in yourself. And you cannot do anything until you believe 
in yourself. You believe that you can do it. So the sure. first important, the most important sale in life that you will ever make is selling yourself to yourself. Is oh making yourself God. believe that you can achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. That's the most important thing. You can sell all these other things that the products that you want to sell, but you cannot sell anything successfully until you can sell yourself to yourself. You can make yourself believe that you are worthy, make yourself believe that you count and that you matter and that your life has a significant, I mean, has an ultimate significance. So that's something that's very important. So how you talk to yourself, is very, very important because it determines how you will show up in the world and what people will see. So that's why it's important for you to talk to yourself respectfully. Speaks one line. Everyone always speaks about one line. Find yourself, but they never unpacked it like the way you did. The way you broke down those questions, I feel that it is assisting a lot of us. It is assisting a lot of us, especially that right now, uh, the research that was done by Sasfin in Africa, it says SME are very a hidden heart because of they have lost contracts and their rate of conversion rate with sales has went down because people have shown disinterest. So this thing drove my attention to ask myself this question, Yauri. How many friends do I have on Facebook? I have 5,000, I always delete, I have 5,000. But I'm not even doing business with about 10% of all of them. Yes. That's the challenge that is there. And also you ask yourself, why do most small businesses fail? It's because people do not work on themselves. They choose the wrong problem just for the money. They don't do what they're supposed to be doing. And, and, and you look at it, no one is focusing on that stuff and saying, what knowledge do you have and how do you develop yourself here? And you're just chasing things because you know what, money has to be there. And hence coming back to that issue of saying, everyone is a speaker and everyone is a coach. But when you look at it, speaking is easy because talk is cheap. I mean, it's easy to come and say, just believe in yourself, you know, just trust in yourself and, 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 and things are going to happen. It's not as easy as that. It starts with you working on yourself and believing that you are worthy of what it is that you want to do. It, it's not, it's being in class and being taught, being exposed. It's being willing to learn. You, you can't just sit there and expect that things are going to happen and you say, no, guys, uh, we, we just need to believe in ourselves. I mean, it goes beyond that. There's a lot of hard work that needs to happen behind the scenes. It doesn't just wow. happen overnight. Hence, it's important that you need to love what you do. Because when you love it, sometimes, let me say something contradictory here. Sometimes yes, in sir. life, you do not have to do what you love, but you have to love what you do. You yes, do not sir. always have to do what you love, but you have to love what you do because if you don't love what you do, you'll never get what you love. So that's something that's very important. There are certain things that you have to do in life which are not happy, which are not good for you, which, which not, not to say they're not good, but which you don't love. For an example, if you want to live uh, or lead a healthy lifestyle and you don't like the greens, then unfortunately you've got to love the greens because if you love the greens and you eat them, then you're going to achieve your goal. You see, that's something that's very important. So all you need to do, fall in love with the things that you need to do, even if you don't love them, but fall in love with them in order to achieve the results that you want to achieve. But most people will always say, no, if you do what you love, you're going to be successful. No, that is not entirely true. It's not about doing what you love, but it's about loving what you do that makes you successful. Wow. It's impossible to drive today's results with yesterday grace. When you started, uh, you shared a story. And as you were talking about this, um, uh, qualified individuals who were chopping the trees down, there's a very important question that you ask. Yahore, sometimes you can be effective, but change the wrong direction. I'm that person sitting right now. And during this lockdown, it has allowed me to go and get my business model. I understand that my model is not educated. 
I understand that I've been investing a lot of my time and resources chasing wrong direction. How do I redirect myself? The way that you need to redirect yourself, you need to get that person who's going to climb up the tree in that jungle where you are busy doing things. That person is a coach. Mm -hmm. You need to invest in a coach. You need to get someone. And, and someone is going to ask you those questions and say, just for an example, if you come to me as a coach and, and others will tell you, I mean, it comes back to what do you do? Because here's the thing here. I mean, here's the thing that is important. If you want to, to have dumpling as a product, dumpling, you want to cook this uh, dumpling, you cannot show up with a porridge recipe because these two things do not match. <laughs> you cannot do that. So you need someone who will ask you and say, what is it that you want to say? I want dumpling. Then I'm able to come and say, but show me your recipe. And then you show me the recipe. Then I say, but this recipe is actually for porridge. It's not for dumpling. So there's no way that you can achieve that. So as a coach that I'm able to redirect you and say, let's look at what you want to achieve. You want this dumpling. So for a dumpling, you need flour, you need salt, you need sugar, you need this and that. And then it's only then that you are able to make sure that you achieve what you want to do. You make sure that as a product, you have the dumpling. That, that's how it works. I mean, there's no, there's no shortcut on that one. But if you want to do it yourself, unfortunately, it's going to take long and you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And uh, yes, yeah, this is... Hello. Yes, so this is, this is very important here. Uh, so coming back to that issue of, you know, getting people here to, to help you, to, to redirect you. So you need to make sure that you get people who know, people that can help you, people that can actually ask you the right questions. And if you do that, you'll be able to grow. So that's something that's very important that you need to understand because you cannot see the picture if you're in a frame. You need to get out, outside of the picture, in order, outside of the frame in order for you to see the picture that is in, in there. So this is something that is very, very important. I think this is one of the questions that was actually asked. Um, just looking at you know, other, other questions. Um, where are we? Looking at the questions, do we have any other question? I'm just looking at the, uh, the chat room here, just looking at more questions. Are there any questions that I may need to, 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 uh, to answer here? Absolutely, there's a difference between wanting to win, showing up with this mindset of wanting to win and the one of just avoiding losing. Because when you are avoiding losing, it means you just do what's enough. You never do something that, you know, will make you happy at the end of the day. You just want to make sure that you save yourself from losing. But if you really want to win, you give it your all. You give your best at all the time. Uh, I'm looking at other questions. Do we have any other question here? Hello, hello, I'm back. And I'm just looking at other questions here. Uh, are there any questions? I think while Tapelo is uh, trying to reconnect because uh, we lost him along the way. But I know that he's actually trying to reconnect uh, and, 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 and come and join us again. Yes, uh, once again, uh, fun figure, it's all about that. You can't be the smartest person in the group. If you are the smartest one in a group, 
it's time to find a new group because you know without without you being challenged it means you're no longer growing it means you are stuck wherever you are you are just a, 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 a you know they say you are a you are a, you are a big fish in a small pond any other question that we have i think while we are waiting yes find yourself and stick to what you are um cdc that's what you yes that's what you mentioned absolutely you know don't try to spend most of your time solving wrong problems you need to know who you are and find and work according to your strengths because your strengths are what i mean your strengths are going to set you apart because if you try to specialize on your weaknesses you'll never make it people are going to actually have you for breakfast so that's very important to know who you are and then work on that. And then it will actually make your journey even a little bit bearable. And then you'll achieve more within a short space of time. I think just waiting for Tapel once again. Any other question that we have while we're waiting for Tapel here? Any other question? So that's, that, that's something I think I'm just, I'm just waiting for something. So once again, I think the point that I just want to emphasize here is that number one, the meaning of life is to find your gift. You need to find that thing that you're good at, something that you feel so good when you do it. Something that you have a natural strength for. That's, that's number one. And then number two on that, and then your purpose is to express that gift, is to do what you are strong in. If you are strong in terms of, you know, uh, 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 playing whatever, I mean, like a guitar or something like that, that's what you have to do. And then you'll see, you will develop so well and you will achieve uh, a great deal. Uh, I think I'm just looking, uh, I think there's a question that is actually coming through uh, from Bongani Makaula it is, when is the right time to have that kind of mindset as people knowing ourselves on who we are? What are we good at and what is the purpose of being on earth? You know, the purpose of being on earth, it comes back to that issue. The purpose is the expression of your gift. So it means that those three things that I've actually given the three steps, you have to find out who you are. It means number one, you need to check, um, you need to check yourself. What is it that when you do it, you feel so good and, and lose sense of things and sense of time and even forget that you are hungry. And number two, you need to look at compiling a list. It can be a WhatsApp message and send it to five people that you think they know you best. I mean, people that have known you for a while and then ask them to write, to give you about three or four things that they really think that you are good at since they, I mean, since they've known you. And then number three, I said, you need to look at, you need to reflect and compile a list and write down things that people have always complimented you on. People telling you that you're good at this and, you know, those kinds of things. So that will give you an indication in terms of what you are good at. And that is not something that you just do it for one week or a month or something. It's a continuous process that you engage yourself in. And then when you do that, you will get to notice yourself and get to see that, no, this is something that I'm good at. And then you start to focus yourself toward that uh, area that you are actually good at. I think that's, that's a question. I hope that I've answered, to, I've answered you well, Bongani. Uh, any other question? I think uh, Tapelo seems to be uh, battling to, uh, to come through. Uh, okay, uh, the other one is, uh, Mr. V, can you please repeat those skills, problem solving? The skills, I spoke about communication skills, problem solving skills, I spoke about goal setting skills. I mean, goal setting skills is very important. And then I spoke about as well, I mean, like I spoke about uh, uh, knowing yourself. Like I've just given you the tips in terms of how to know yourself. Like those three 
uh, things or three steps or three lists that you can actually compile. So that's something that's, that will actually help you a great deal. And also reading books, and I teach about how to read a book and also how to learn for you to remember things because most people are just reading, but how do you really learn to remember things that you need to read? Um, okay, is reading books enough to improve communication skills? Uh, it's, it's not actually enough. I think you need to read books. Also, the other thing, uh, one other thing that uh, the platform that I recommend, try to find any Toastmasters club around you. A Toastmasters club is that organization which is international that helps people improve their public speaking skills and their listening skills and their ability as well to, to write and, and plan, you know, like you, your speech well. So it helps you to improve your leadership skills, your speaking skills, as well as your listening skills. So reading books is actually one part of it, but you need to also to join and especially join the Toastmasters uh, uh, club near you. It will actually help you because you not only just read, but you are able to communicate, to speak as well. And, and have uh, people that are gonna help you improve, mentors and that will evaluate your speeches. And I think there's another question here that was asked as well. As a starter or novice to, sell, uh, to self mastery, what is the minimum time that a person can allocate to himself or herself on a daily basis on the journey of knowing thyself? So this is, this is something that you can give, I think it's gonna improve with time. I think the first thing that you need to do, you can give yourself about, start with about maybe 30 minutes to about an hour. Because the more as well you read and you engage, whenever you play games and do things, notice yourself, when you love that thing, then know that I'm gonna put it down because this is something that I really, I mean, that I can feel in my heart that I actually love it. So that's how you continually do these things. So there's no specific time that you can allocate in a day. So you can look at about maybe start with 30 minutes and that, and then the more you enjoy it is the more you will get to understand, but it's about noticing yourself and taking stock of yourself. Uh, there's another question that comes from uh, Jablile here. Uh, Sir, can you please repeat the explanation of expand in Bailey? So the expand, it means you need to expand your goals. It means you need to grow because most people do not fail in life because they aim too high and miss, but they fail because they aim too low and they hit. It simply means that people set lousy and very easy, simple goals that they can achieve and they feel good about themselves, but they have not been challenged by those goals. They have not been challenged while working on those goals. So when you expand your goals, it means you are challenging yourself. Every time you set a goal, you set a goal with a stretch. You set a goal with that room for you to grow so that you feel some challenges and because it is those challenges that will actually make you grow as a person. So that's something that's very important. And I hope I've explained that. So the E, which is the, I mean, that to expand. I think any other, any other question here? Uh, okay, thanks, thanks, Jamila. Any other question? I'm just, I was just waiting for a question. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jamila. Any other question? I'm just waiting. I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm at your service, guys. Any other question? You know, questions excite me. So I think uh, I'm not sure if we've actually, I don't know if we're going to reach the end. Is there any other question here? Let me see uh, if there's any question. Find, okay. Um, okay, uh, I think it seems like, okay, there's no other question here. And I think uh, if there's anything that maybe one will need to know, and then uh, I think I can be contacted at uh, Veli at velindava.com or you can just check me on the messenger or you know you can maybe even whatsapp me if you have my number but i think sending me an email or connecting on these social uh, media channels 
we can be able to continue with this. Uh, I think uh, seeing that there's no other question, uh, I would like to, I think I will actually uh, get to end the session. Uh, it seems like Clapelo is back. All right. Oh, I'm hey, I was just I was just closing off. Welcome back, Capello. Oh. Okay. All right. Can yes. you hear me now? Yes. Right. Yes, I can hear you now. I'm sorry, okay. but I just, I got cut off. I don't know what was happening. Then I struggled to come in, but I am seems to have came back. So I'm not sure how much I've missed out uh, when I was still cut off. But on 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 behalf of everyone, I just want to. Thank you, Mdate Velindaba, for coming and blessing our day with such so much wisdom. And you are one of the best in the in, in the field, and you've been in the field for quite a while. I think sometimes we miss people who just become authentic and share their own stories. So for also inviting us in your personal space, in your own life, and how you made decision, I just want to say I am grateful for, for, for that. And still being in the lockdown, I think some of us, we are still afforded an opportunity to go back and try to reinvent ourselves. Remember, knowledge is not power until it is you, you start understanding and applying it to yourself. So let's go out and try to implement, to try to become better people. Because at the end of the day, we need to be better. For when this lockdown is over, we need to take off with 120. We can't, we can't go without having 120. So on behalf of everyone, and for taking time out on the Friday evening, Possibly you might have been relaxing and having a cup of tea. I just want to thank you, Tatu Akashi. Thank you very much. Uh, same here. I think for me, this is something that I really enjoy doing. I can just do it anytime. And uh, <laughs> I think whenever I actually share, I feel good because really it is something that I truly believe that uh, God is actually given it to me uh, to share and, and to make a difference in the lives of people. And whenever there's an opportunity uh, to do it, I really enjoy it. And, and, and once again, thank you very much. And I, I truly believe that maybe I've just added some value in that, but uh, yes, I'm sure it's just the beginning of the many things. A lot, even a lot, a lot. What, what, what do you have for, inter what, what, what programs do you have right now and how do we get a uh, hold of you in that one? Uh, I'm available on social media uh, channels. I'm available on Instagram. I'm available on Facebook. <clears throat> I'm available on Twitter. And I'm available on LinkedIn. And uh, I mean, as uh, the listeners can actually follow, I mean, there's a lot of, I, I write a lot of posts and articles um, every Sunday. And people can actually go to my website, uh, velindaba.com to subscribe in order to, I mean, to, to receive these articles every Sunday at 12 p.m. without fail, something that's gonna continue from what we are doing. And also <clears throat> get to read many other articles that I've, uh, that I've actually uh, 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 written and which are in this space in terms of how to improve yourself, how to be a better person and how to apply because there are two sets of skills that you need to improve. There's a goal setting skill and there's a goal achieving skill. Mm. And that one is something that I train even big companies in terms of mm. goal achieving. Because the other one is about the mindset, the goal mm. achieving one. Mm. Goal setting one, and people talk about goal setting, and there are people who are professional goal setters, but they are never professional goal achievers. So mm. I try to combine the two. 
and make you a goal achiever instead of being a goal setter. So you don't want to end up being in debt and then you just talk about ideas which are never tested, that are never implemented. And I think for me, that's where you get to see those things. And those as well that can set and book personal coaching with me, uh, one-on-ones. I mean, that is actually allowed and we, we communicate with that. So they can send me an email. I'm available at valley at valindaba.com. That's my email address. And then as well, you can find me on my website, valley at valindaba.com as well. I'm in valindaba.com. I mean, you get me there on Facebook, Messenger, and yes, I'm, 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 I'm available. So it's, it's the same name, Velinda, but on all social media, Facebook, yes. Instagram, and LinkedIn. Yes, because I'm, I'm connected with me. It's just Velinda, but that, that's what it is. <laughs> and, also, and also, I've yes, I've written books, and I, and I do, I mean, I do get, get invited in book to go and speak at different seminars and different places, and obviously now it's lockdown, but it's very important that you need to work on your mindset and just not end up there, but also do the work. But I want to emphasize the issue of a coach and a mentor. That's very, very important because I'm where I am today because of those people that challenged me. I invested a lot of money in in the person Mm. that I became, but money Mm. at the end of the day doesn't mean much if you Mm. are not what you want to be. So I think mm-hmm. we need to invest in ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's what we need to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's impossible to be productive until such a time our mindset is stimulated by new horizons. And right now, whatever has been taking us from apartheid to now, it has expired. We need yes. a new formation for us to build a better country. And building a better country requires me and you to sit in our table and start building ourselves for a better tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Muta Utapelo. And like I always say, remember that you are the best and unbeatable element of success. Tomorrow we're still continuing, but tomorrow is different. It's 9 a.m. to 9.40 a.m. So tomorrow we're starting at 9 a.m. So then you could have a day Saturday afternoon and Sunday of digesting all the information. Remember, we brought this for four weeks. So we have the next three weeks to be with you. Please don't miss, don't miss any session. And we just realized one thing that a lot of our emails that we're sending, they get, they go straight to your spam emails because of the link and the information. Please, if it happens by midday, uh, in any day that you don't get that email, yeah, yeah, the link. Please communicate with us. Communicate with us on our WhatsApp 083-21400047. 083-21400047. So then we can be able to assist you and help you in time. Ntatoaga, blessed and a peaceful night further and enjoy the, the rest of your weekend. May God accelerate your wisdom. May God increase the pace of your impact in our society and may your gift create a space and favor in men and everyone that you come across. Thank you so much, Tapedo. I'm humbled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank and you. all the best with the remaining sessions. Ndadwak? I was saying thank you very much and all the best for the remaining uh, sessions. Thank you very much. Seminar. Thank you very much, Inter. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, so let's meet tomorrow. The pace is still the same. We are not crashing. We are not going down because of lockdown. Something is coming. Let's all be prepared. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much.